Hello everyone, glad to have you with me, CK Too Much here back with King Tywin of the Iron Throne, here at his final chapter, we could say. Um, so in the last episode, guys, we finally cleansed the Iron Islands of all the Ironborn. So they still live there, but uh, they're completely dominated by Westermen now, I believe. Except for maybe the Hornsby. Oh, but he's a Westerman too. Um, so the rulers are gone, but the culture remains. Um, before we finish this series, I have a few things that I would like to do. Uh, actually, hold on, guys. Let me close the balcony. Sorry, I should have done that before I started the video, but it was a little. La it wasn't so loud out there when I started. But okay, uh, we have a few more things that I would like to do. Um, I would like to resolve this issue here in Blackwater Rush. Let me see if I can find some loyalists uh, to join me here at court, and let me see if I can get some. Uh, council support from as many people as possible. Looks like most people would say no. Maybe I can get a new Septon. Hmm. Okay, a few a few people would say yes. I don't know who this guy is, but we oh, it's an Aaron. Could probably find someone better. Love to find uh, no loyalists here. Uh, okay. And I would love to get her... Okay, and she would get her, my support as well. Okay. So let's wait for those to come in. Uh, oh, and my great-nephew owes a lot of money, so I will pay the interest on his loan. Oh, yikes! He has been declared incapable by the Boltons? And Bolton, the Boltons are acting as his regent. Oof, that is not good. That is not good. We might have to deal with that. Okay. Okay, I think we've got everyone. Okay, I would like to end this here. So let's uh, command him. So this guy, Joshua Burney, is attacking uh, Lord Cressy for Blackwater Rush. He... This uh, we cannot allow this to happen because Mr. Cressy was or is married to, matrilineally to Lady Ellen Lannister, and her child Victor Lannister will go on to inherit this high lordship. And you know what? I should get him married, maybe to this Grey Fear, to another lord. Um, so we can't let him take this. So he will com end this war. If not, I will imprison him. Uh, okay, so we have voted for this. His cause is just. Well, uh, and I can't imprison him. That is a shame. Uh, are they winning? Looks like they are winning. I would love to join this war for him. Uh, I wonder if I revoke this title from him if that would help you know what I'll, I'll try to help him out a little bit I'm gonna try to transfer this guy under him this guy broke free Mr. House Lord Walton Taylor he was a peasant leader became a lord um, I would love to get rid of this guy don't know why I can't Hmm. Well, that's a shame. Maybe this will give him a little bit of a boost in men. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm not really sure what else I could do. I need to be able to protect this, but... Yeah, I'm not sure. I guess I could just revoke it and give it... To, uh, no, no, I can't. Okay. Well, I guess I'll let that play out. Um, hopefully nothing bad will happen there. Uh, okay, so when it comes to Tywin, we have pretty much come to the end of his journey. And let me tell you guys what I am thinking about here. Uh, in this episode, I kind of want to uh, take a look around Westeros, see where things stand, and... Um, 
and then finish the series. So we're going, um, a lot of my subscribers have asked to have a time lapse to see what has Tywin really built. Uh, will his dynasty stand? And I would like to see that as well. So what we are going to do is, as I said, take a look around the kingdom, see what has happened. I will make some predictions. I want you guys to make some predictions in the comments for what you think will happen. And then I will allow the time lapse to go. And in the next episode, we will check on what has happened in Westeros and see whose predictions came true. Um, the way I want to do the time lapse is first, maybe I'll do it for a hundred years, and then I'll take a look around, see what's happened. If all the Lannisters are gone, I'll stop watching. Then maybe I'll go for 500 years and do the same thing. If there's no more Lannisters, I'll stop watching. And then let maybe go to a thousand years and see what has really happened in Westeros. Probably some crazy stuff. Uh, so I will use cheat codes to turn it on to spectator mode. And I'll just let it kind of play out. Um, but okay. So, uh, and before I take a look around... Um, there's not really much else I could do. I could maybe revoke some titles and give them to some Lannisters. You know what? Perhaps I could even revoke uh, Dragonstone. I would really like that. You know what? Yeah, maybe I will do that. I will retract the vassalage of Dragonstone. Ooh, okay, so King Jerrion has declared the Northern Deep Down De Jure War. Okay, so that looks like that will be open. That will be over soon. Uh, okay, and they have accepted this betrothal. That is good. All right. All right, then, Mr. Scales. Uh, you will be... You will lose Dragonstone. Uh, okay. And you know, I might even revoke her High Lordship of Dragonstone as well. Okay. And you know what? I'll just revoke her High Title, her High Lordship. Uh, ancestrally, that should be part of the Targaryen dynasty anyway um okay and uh okay this guy's looking for allies to help against the north uh that's not good okay and what is this okay good so the vote on whether to command him has been taken and they voted against so that is good so we were able to stop that okay you know what actually it looks like this war might be over in a minute Uh, it looks like this war might be over in a minute, so maybe we can resolve it. Saltcliffe, didn't I marry you off? I forgot about you. I have all these wards from the last war. Um, I guess I can marry you off matrilineally to some Riverlands girl or something. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe this Goodbrook. I guess I'll marry off all these ironborns um just to kind of get rid of their dynasties Ooh, a vacancy in the king's guard um uh, and my regent has chosen uh mr morton rampton okay sounds good to me okay so this guy has been captured uh so what's gonna happen then war's over yeah. So let's wait for that to play out. Okay, so is the war over or what? It's 100%, should be over, right? Uh, okay, and let's see. Mr. Blount owes some money. Um, I'll order him to pay the debt. Okay, well... This guy, uh, the Blouds have always caused me some trouble since they're Crownlands vassals. All right, two people have eloped. Oh, 
this guy has married a bowling. Hmm. Well, I guess if she's married to him, there's no one powerful to press her claim. So I guess I can accept this marriage. Uh, but it's not so consequential. Maybe Tywin would have done something about it, but I have bigger things on my plate. And I think we're pretty firmly in power, so it really doesn't matter. Oh, and you know what, uh, Tywin? I think I'm going to revoke uh, Dalston's keep. Oh, but it says maybe. Okay, that might be a little risky. Never mind. I thought that uh, Uthor had some land here. Hm. Oh, well. Okay, so this has been resolved. Oh, hold on, guys. We got an autosave. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, oh, okay. So this has been resolved. So... Aha! Oh, so they put a different Cressy on the throne. Okay. So that's interesting. So this guy was fighting for a different Cressy's claim. I think this was the old Cressy. Yeah, so Raynor had it. I, um, I guess I, I thought I got rid of him, didn't I? I'm pretty sure that I just got rid of him. Uh, I, I put Mr. Harold on the throne. And, uh, yeah, and then now he's back. Well, okay, I'm sorry, bro. You're not going to get that. <clears throat> so we can say adios to you. Uh, and then you, I'm going to imprison your ass if I can. He might start a war. Well, could I revoke his title? I'll just do that instead. And you and you. And you know what? You too, Mr. Taylor. You are some fucking peasant. You should not have this territory. Okay. And they don't want to end up like the Ironborn. We're just waiting on him. Okay. Okay then. So Victor Lannister. Oh, look at that. Pike has finally been converted to the Faith of the Seven. Wow, I really did not see that happening. Okay, so, uh, Harold, I'm just going to skip you and give it straight to your son. <laughs> so, High Lordship of Blackwater Rush now belongs to Lannister Hands. Okay, so we have gotten this final business here done. Um, okay, that is great that we were able to convert Pike. I really did not see that coming. Um, oh, and there's actually another war going on. Hold on a minute. So I will send you to further convert. What's going on with l the Fossaways? Okay, they're at war over Bitter Bridge. But okay, guys, um, I think that pretty much wraps up all the loose ends that I wanted to address here. Um, so I don't know how Tywin has made it this old. I mean, I, I had a lot of sicknesses that I survived, but I'm still incapable. And I'm kind of gobsmacked that he is not dead. And I'm kind of worried about how much longer he will live. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and end this here. Uh, but I will let you guys decide what I should do. So I have an opinion that Tywin might commit suicide uh, now I can do this two ways one we can do the time lapse where I leave Tywin here and just let him live out the rest of his life or I could make him commit suicide uh, before the time lapse starts and we can get some closure and in the last episode maybe we can have his funeral before I start the time lapse let me know in the comments guys if you want me to uh, make him commit suicide or just leave him be. Uh, that's what I want to know. Um, two, the next thing I want you guys to comment on is the predictions that you are going to make. So now we're going to go around the kingdom and kind of see how things stand and where you think things will be. So uh, let's start with the Reach. So 
Um, the Reach was the first place that we were able to uh, get into Lannister hands. So Mace Tyrell, who has finally died a natural death at the age of 52. Oh, which happened, looks like, not too long ago. Um, but okay. We were able to remove him from power uh, by putting his brother, or his uncle rather, Garce, on the throne. Mace was very young at the time, so there was an opportunity for us. We married Garce matrilineally to my cousin Sorel Lannister, and she, oh, she later married a Harth Harthorn. Okay. And then they had gave birth to multiple children. He had two bastards, one of them, Garce Flowers who was a very helpful commander for us. But anyway, um, this passed on to Jerrion the Ugly, who did not rule for very long. And then this passed to Queen Lana the Gallant. And she is actually, she's been with us for a long time. She has been quite an effective ruler. And now she is married to Tiggit uh, Lannister. <coughs> now, the Riverlands is also an interesting story for this series because... Um, they were our first allies, and um, Hoster Tully helped us capture the Reach, and so did his brother Brynden. Um, he disinherited his daughter Catelyn in order to get a marriage with Jaime. I didn't notice that until a subscriber pointed it out to me. But then, when her father died, Carolyn became the new uh, Lady of the Trident, but even though Catelyn was disinherited, she still had a claim. So we decided to remove Carolyn and put in Catelyn, which paved the way for Tiggit to uh, become the heir. However, um, she had a different kind of succession law, an elective succession law. And um, ultimately, when I tried to uh, force her to change it, uh, that led to a disagreement that led to her being removed from power, uh, basically. Although I, uh, yeah, yeah. Although I suppose um, ultimately what happened, she, she voluntarily decided to change the succession law, but then when I had that war with the Bowlings, that's what did her in. Uh, okay. Uh, and then Tiggit and Lana, they have this child together, Erwin. They have Erwin, Garrison, and Tommen. Three boys here. So do the math there, right? <laughs> Jamie's son, who is heir to the Iron Throne and the current uh, Lord of the Westerlands, has a son, Tiggit. Tiggit is Lord of the Riverlands and is married to Queen Lana of the Reach. That means that Erwin, or I'm sorry, Erwin, is going to inherit the Reach from his mother, the... Uh, Riverlands from his father, and the Westerlands and the throne from his grandfather. That's crazy. So that's going to be a lot of power in one hand. And I think that Erwin, if he's not, he's going to have to give out some of those titles, or he's probably going to face a lot of backlash. So I could see the AI or Erwin. Well, let's not talk about the AI. Maybe we can take that into consideration later. But I think that Erwin might face some problems when he inhi inherits all of that power. I wonder if we can marry him to someone. You know, I'm gonna get him married to this Dorn, the sister of the Dornishman. Um, so that way he can at least have some kind of alliance going in. So let's see if they will approve that. Okay, so hopefully that will help save him. So Lady Margot of Dorne is the sister of the current Prince of Dorne. So hopefully... Uh, oh, and then Eleanor is... Okay, and then Dorne is allied with the Stormlands too. So hopefully that will help Erwin out. But I think that once so much is concentrated into Erwin, there could be some problems. Uh, with someone having so much power. And I don't know if he's going to give those titles out, but he should. Um, okay. Now, moving on to Dorne. Um, we have a lot of regencies going on. So we have a regency in Dorne going on. Uh, and we have a regency in the north going on, too. This regency in the north troubles me the most. I didn't really notice this. So 
he's declared incapable, but that doesn't mean he's incapable. And Roos, you know, Roos has played a very interesting game here. Aha, uh -huh, and it looks like he has given himself the High Lordship of White Harbor as regent. Interesting, so he's Hand of the King in the north. It's a good thing he's not Master of Whispers. So that's interesting. So as regent, Roos Bolton has had Jerrion declared incapable. So uh, I would love to deal with this. But I don't think I can do it without causing a problem. Uh, oh, hold on. Maybe I can ask him to b block this plot and then get him arrested. Let's see. Hold on. No response from Roos yet. Oh, okay. It it sent, but it, nothing happened. Okay, eight days. Hold on. Okay, nothing. Mm, okay, well, whatever. So, um... That's very interesting. You know, Roos has always been loyal. There's been multiple rebellions in the uh, uh, in the in the north, and Roos has never, ever, ever, ever rebelled against the Lannisters. And I think he used that trust to leverage himself into this position. And I think he's going to use it to his advantage. So I could see maybe the Boltons trying to overthrow the Lannisters, and I don't know if the Lannisters in the south will have the same will as Tywin did to make sure that that's, it stays in Lannister hands. Similarly, uh, well, let's back up a bit. So the way that we also got our hands on the North was through Lyanna Stark. Uh, Lyanna Stark, who had a strong claim on the North, married Jerrion, my brother, and we were able to use her claim to put her on the throne. Then this passed to Leslin. Leslin was killed in battle. And uh, his murderer, his killer, was, uh, he was put in my cell, in which he went crazy through torture. He lost a hand, he lost a leg, he lost a nose, he lost an eye, and he lost his private parts. And then he died of his injuries. But anyway, this is what Tywin does with people who kill Lannisters. <coughs> he faced multiple rebellions and then died. Uh, and then I think the Lords of the North were happy with that, because now there's a regency. Earlier, the Manderleys were that regent, but now not so much. Interesting. Plus, the Rills have married into the Manderley house. So, okay. I could see a great northern conspiracy where these vassals are all happy. They're like, okay, Tywin's about to die, and uh, we have control. But but Jerrion's only a few years away from, from this. But I could definitely see them losing the north. Same in the Iron Islands. I can see the Iron Islands um, being lost, too. Oh, but look at that. They finally had a kid, Lord Davin. Maybe I could set up a match here, too. You know what? I will marry Davin to uh, Princess... What was her name? Uh, I'll find out in a second. Jorel, I think. My granddaughter. Okay. So Jarell Lannister, my granddaughter, uh, who's the son of the daughter of the Bowlings, uh, hopefully that will help them uh, have help, that will help Uthor, the Uthor Lannisters have uh, an alliance on the mainland. Uh, okay, but I could definitely see an Ironborn revolt happening because all of their you know their religious. Uh, overlords and their ironborn overlords are gone so i could see a major ironborn revolt happening to get rid of the lannisters too but i'm not really sure uh so that could happen maybe not everything would be lost but maybe some of it uh now onto the veil well oh, well i'm sorry guys let me back up here so the the iron islands was really hard to get our hands on uh we were trying our best to kill a uh, to try to get some claims but that never happened and then ultimately what happened is we kidnapped Victorian and forced him to marry Ella and told him 
listen, marry my daughter, call your kids Lannisters, you can rule in the Iron Islands. He said, okay. And, uh, well, he was king for a while, but he changed the inheritance so that a Greyjoy would inherit through elective monarchy. Uh, but then we managed to put his son on the throne, Uthor, instead. But as you can see here, it was not so clean. Uh, a kingdom of the Lion Isles. So, let's see. So, first... Uh, yeah. First, um, I don't think that is correct that Victarion inherited. We put him on the throne. Then this Torwin guy... Um, inherited it but we managed to he died in our dungeons and we put Victarion back on the throne then Victarion once again changed the succession laws we we put him on the throne with the condition that he would change the succession laws but then he changed them back so then I incited him to revolt I tricked him into revolting and uh it worked and he died and we um we're, sorry guys, I'm losing my train of thought here. Uh, and with that, I decided, okay, Victarion, your son is old enough to keep it, so you are gone. But then Uthor faces rebellion after rebellion, and ultimately these Volmarks are able to come into power, and that is when we just went in there, revoked all of the Ironborn, kicked them out, and you see it for what it is now. Um, so having all of these provinces ruled by Westermen and Lannisters will help, but I don't think it's going to be decisive just because of those revolts. Uh, but, okay. Um, speaking of Victarion, so when we tricked him into revolting, uh, that kind of caused problems for the Aarons. Now the Aarons um, were the well probably the hardest nut to crack here. But Emma Aaron, she failed to call, she failed to answer the call to arms for when we attacked the Iron Islands, which was useful to me because I had the opportunity to uh, secure the veil vale for House Lannister. So Emma Aaron did have a Lannister heir, but he died, and she had no one to pass it on to. It would have passed to an Aaron. So I use that as an excuse to imprison her and then just give it to Tywin, who has no connection to the Aarons, with the Aarons at all. <laughs> um, and this was particularly sad because, as you guys remember, Emma was born in my prison and she died in my prison or in my dungeons. Mina <clears throat> Tyrell was married to John Aaron. We kidnapped her and she gave birth to Emma uh, in prison. And we kept Emma as a prisoner until she was old enough to marry Richard and then we put them on the throne together in the veil vale. uh, or we let her inherit it I'm sorry so she ruled the the veil vale from my dungeon until she married Richard but uh, yeah the 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 errands were the hardest nut to crack there were no claimants no anything we tried our best to do assassinations to get a relative of the Wayne Woods into power but that didn't really work uh, I believe Richard Lannister Emma's husband yeah was the son of Alyssa the Jittery and I thought that maybe if we killed enough of them that uh, it would work and that she would inherit and that he would but it didn't really work out that way but we managed to get it by just pure force uh, as kings Speaking of that, Tywin was actually supposed to be king of Westeros, and Tywin was not supposed. This Tywin was not supposed to be king at all. So, as you can see, uh, Ciela Targaryen is Tywin's mother. Uh, she was not the first Targaryen to marry a bunch of Lannisters. So, Ciela, uh, Rhaegal. And Rhaegar were all married to Lannisters. First, Cersei, who has just gotten over him. Uh, her child with Rhaegar, Vera, was put on the throne after a great council 
but then when we decided to take the throne for ourselves, uh, we attacked her with all of our allies and forced her to be in the Silent Sisters. Uh, and then I believe, yes, we killed her son, Russell Scales, uh, suspiciously to make sure that there was no question of who would inherit. Uh, and then I'm going to be honest, guys. L hold on. Let me check a second. Maybe it will tell me. One of those Lannist... One of those... Um, okay. Yes. So I don't know who killed Rhaegar. Someone killed him under suspicious circumstances, and that worked out well for us. But Rhaegal, we killed him under suspicious circumstances. And once he died, uh, Viserys II, got, or the third, I'm sorry, got his hands on the throne. And I believe we displaced him twice. Uh, let me double check that. Yeah, so Ares passed it on to Rhaegar. Rhaegar was killed by I don't know who. Then Rhaegal inherited, and I killed him suspiciously. Then it passed on to Viserys III. Um, we were able to organize a war against him to put Ciela on as claimant. Tywin was supposed to inherit the Iron Throne. But then she willingly gave the throne back to Viserys, I believe under pressure from the vassals. Uh, and then after I killed him, it went... She, for some reason, was disqualified <coughs> from inheriting. I don't know why. And then there was a grand council. I was hoping they would decide to give it to Ciela, but they gave it to Vera. At which point, Tywin said, Nah, go away. I will be king myself, and you will be a silent sister. So now the Targaryen house is basically no more. We have Vera alive, uh, Ciela alive, her mother alive, and then Baron Targaryen. Oh, you know, I did not catch this. I did not catch this. That's interesting. That's very interesting. I actually did not know that this person existed. Huh. That's very interesting. Okay. So, um, it looks like Ciela, at the age of 40... Gave birth to another Targaryen, Bar Baron Targaryen, that kind of rhymes, to this knight who allowed her to um, marry him matrilineally. That's very interesting. I wonder, you know, Tywin would probably be scared of that. I wonder if we could maybe imprison her. So if we imprison them, they might declare war or flee to another court. Uh, you know what? Hmm. It might... Well, I would hope that she would not be able to produce another child at that age. But you never know. <sighs> well, you know what? We have an 83% chance of getting this kid. Let's try it. Alright. No, he has escaped. Very interesting. So he has escaped to Tolos. So now we just have a Targaryen hanging out around there. That's very interesting. Uh, maybe we could also try to get our hands on his mother. And she has also escaped to Volantis. Okay, that's very interesting. So we can think of it this way. I tried to imprison both of them, but they weren't able to coordinate how they left, so they got separated. One of them went to Volantis, and one of them went to Tolos. Although, you know what? Um, thematically, I would like to put them in the same place, but maybe we can say that they were separated and unable to coordinate that. So that's kind of scary. Um, we have two Targaryens just hanging out uh, in Essos. The miracle child, Baron Targaryen, who might be able to claim uh, the Iron Throne. So that's kind of scary. Uh, but okay, guys. And then, what else can I say? Dorn, um, we managed to get our hands on Dorn uh, with Oberyn. We put him on the throne. He did the same thing with trying to make it an elected succession. Um, but eventually, willingly, he gave it, he changed it to primogeniture, and then Joanna inherited. 
Uh, Joanna fought alongside the Bowlings in the war where I tried to imprison uh, Stefan. I'm sorry, Ormond Bowling. Uh, I uh, Ormond Bowling was very was living and he's still alive. He's 68, and his son was also quite young. And I had the chance to arrest Ormond Bowling, knowing it would fail. It was a one percent chance of success, and I used that as an excuse to defeat him in battle, and then just skip Ronard, Ronard altogether and give it directly to Leo. And then, unexpectedly, Joanna Lannister of Dorne joined in, and so did Catelyn Tully. So I was able to consolidate power in the Riverlands and the Stormlands through that war, and get rid of an unloyal vassal. So that's really all I can say about that. Uh, the Stormlands was also hard to get, but we had those bowlings as claimants. So, all right, guys, this video was actually much longer than I expected. I expected this to be like a five-minute video, but we went on for quite a bit. So in this video, we uh, kind of got rid of all the loose ends, yeah? We made sure the Blackwater Rush stayed in our hands. We took back Dragonstone. Uh, I would love to maybe deal with this Roost situation, but I don't think it's going to work. And it might actually cause a war, so we're not going to do it. Excuse me, I think <laughs> it's a little burp. And then that's kind of scary that the Targaryens fled to Essos. But let me know what you guys think about uh, those two things. First of all, Tywin. Should I allow him to commit suicide before I start the, um, you know, the observation where we see how far into the future will House Lannister go? Uh, should I let him live for that or not? Uh, or do you guys want me to keep playing this? I kind of, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I, I'm kind of ready to move on from this. And I think Tywin's done everything that he could. And I don't know how much longer he's going to live. So I think I'm going to leave it at that. Um, and then also, let me know what you guys think about your predictions. What do you think is going to happen? Do you agree with me that Roos might take power in the north? Uh, do you think that the Ironborn will revolt and overthrow the Lannisters here? Uh, do you think that Erwin is going to have too much power and that this is going to cause a huge civil war? And also, I mean, we have those Targaryens hanging out in Essos. Will that come back to bite us in the ass? So those are all the things that I would like for you guys to tell me. Um, but all right, guys, this has been a fantastic series. Let me know those things in the comments, and I will see you guys in the next series.